another day. I figured it out. No matter what life throws at me, I stay content. Been through the lows and highs, faced hunger and plenty. Here's the secret. I can handle it all. Thanks to the strength I get from God. Attack the day. So I remember last week after a brief journey with the leader of Warrior Walks, the topic came up after we had a quick unload about standards and goals and what that means. And there was a point in time in my life where bodybuilding, like the most important thing to me, getting the body of my dreams, reaching my goals and kind of reaching my genetic peak. I mean, let's face it, it was a period of my life where it was an obsession. I was tracking everything. I was managing and monitoring all my lifts. I was doing everything right, more or less, in the bodybuilding world that you could imagine to reach that level of godlike power in the gym. Standards are a priority. So during this obsession, I would go through bouts of a repetitive cycle of eating 3,000 to 4,000 calories on end, and each time with the hopes of reaching my genetic peak. Now, there's a lot of different sciences that have come out since then that would beg to differ, but at that period of time, that's what I thought and I believed was what I needed to do to reach that goal. Now, I've done a lot of work over the years, foundational work, foundational values for myself and my family with, you know, bodybuilding, those principles, the habits, the routines that I had to build in order to get the body that I always wanted and to maintain the body that I have took a lot of dedication, a lot of work, a lot of trial and error, a lot of manipulating my habits and routines and a lot of discipline. You know, I gained a significant amount of fat during that whole process. A lot of times, you know, it felt like it was pointless. I would eat these calories for months on end, ready, getting prepared for a bodybuilding show or to go on vacation with my family. And it was time to cut. And every year the same cycle continued where I would have the 20 inch arms in the bulk. And then I would have generally 16, 17 inch arms in the cut. I put on a significant amount of size, but I couldn't maintain that size because a lot of it was fat. I was strong, I felt good at times, but it was at a cost. Like I said, my health, the way I looked, the confidence that I was looking forward to. Consuming calories at this proportion was definitely a recipe for disaster. I'd only see one to two pounds change on the scale. I go from a cut to a bulk, a cut to a bulk, and each time with the hopes of just this newfound level, this newfound strength, this newfound level of size that I never could attain. You know, as a kid, you find out that Santa Claus isn't real, but I figured out early on that Santa Claus wasn't real when it came to bodybuilding. You know, I would see all these great strong men accomplish their goals, get on stage, put all this size and strength on and tell me to eat 3,000, 4,000 calories. But they were lying. They weren't telling the truth. There was something that was missing from the equation. Steroids, PEDs, performance enhancing drugs at that principle, but I really just wanted to test that principle to see if it was possible. Now I'm no I'm in no way, form, or fashion, you know, using that as an excuse to not still train hard or anything, but to get to that level, I wasn't willing to put my body through that. So I didn't want it that bad. And I realized that that was my standard. So it made me go on a search for finding out my most muscular potential. And through that, I understood that, you know, from five, five to six foot, you know, there's different numbers and different variations that you can determine how big you can get naturally. Six foot tall man. With me being five, eight, five, nine <laughs> on a good day, you know what I mean? That was never going to be the number that I could hit and still look the way I want it shredded, you know? So it was essential for me to stay focused on understanding what it was I could reach. So I did the research, I found out my genetic potential. And for me, it was somewhere around 170, 175, if I really pushed it, really, really 172. And I had to determine that that was my genetic peak. You know, now I could cut down for a bodybuilding show and be about 160, 162, you know, but off stage, in clothes, I look like a skeleton. I look like a crypt keeper. Now on stage, I look like a beast. So that was the illusion. That was the, the understanding I had to make and the clarification, the clarity I got. So I remember I saw an article, um, you know, a while back where everybody was talking about Tristan, Tristan Tate, one of the Tate brothers. And he had posted a video or a picture, I believe, of himself 
working out. Um, he was pretty swole. He had put on some size. He was nowhere near probably even under 10% body fat, but he looked massive. He looked strong and everybody assumed it was steroids or, you know, that was the, that was the assumption, but that wasn't it, you know, and I, and I posted about that on Twitter and, you know, it got some buzz. There was another uh, person, influential person you guys may have heard of, Mike Rashid. He posted recently about how when he was on his peak, his top level when he was working out and training with C.T. Fletcher, that he was eating an extreme amount of calories and how he was borderline close to diabetes. So you have to think about that. What are you willing to give up? What's the cost? Is it worth it? For him, it wasn't. And I'm proud of him and I'm glad to hear that he gave it up. He, to him, he says, oh, I'm not that big anymore. He's still big. He's still massive. You know, again, I'm talking natural numbers and I, again, never try to shed or dim anybody else's life who chooses to do something otherwise. That's just not me. That's not my goal. So I made a quote, you can overeat and kill yourself in the process. Working out and eating right and all that, it's not worth it to take those drugs, in my opinion. But don't take my word, up, word for it. Do your research and you make the best decision for you. So as me and our frameworks are all different, everybody's framework is different. You know, you wouldn't essentially build on a rocky foundation or even build a house on support beams that couldn't meet the recommended threshold. So why would I in turn put too much into my body and too much work into something that I couldn't sustain? So that's where understanding your standards is very important as a man who wants to lead his family. See, when I determined and fall and figured out what my genetic potential was for me, it was a weight that was lifted from my shoulders. It was something that allowed me to come into the next level of Drew, right? So it allowed me to be able to now focus on different avenues, different goals, right? But at first and every foremost, you have to understand that you have to know your standards. So I learned my standards from my body. I learned what was possible. I learned what wasn't possible. And I removed the limiting beliefs because I know exactly what I'm able to do. Now, strength, that's a whole nother level. Naturally, what you can achieve is, is way over supersedes, I believe, what you can look like. You can be stronger than what you look like, and that's perfectly fine. So we have to redefine our strengths. So after all those years in bodybuilding, I figured out one key point here. Real strength, the kind that counts, is not about how big your biceps are. It's not about how much you can bench. It, it's, it's none of those things. It's not how big you are, 16, 17, 20 inch arms. It doesn't matter. As a father and a leader of my family, it's so vital for me to understand my standards and set them and meet them so I can reach new goals. And if there are goals that are not attainable to me or every goal is attainable, I'm not willing to sacrifice certain things, I need to be honest with myself. That was something that for over a decade I said I chased and I attempted to reach new peaks and new numbers, but it wasn't possible. Santa Claus wasn't real. So I urge you to find your standards, make your standards, meet your standards so you can set new goals. This is going to be a significant series where I'll go through and break down each standard of living that I've accomplished and realized for myself and some I still haven't and I'm battling with to help you reach the next level. You have to understand your values, what you value as a man. I valued heavily in my appearance and what I wanted to achieve both physically and mentally with all the time I put in the gym. But I urge you and I ask you right now, what are your standards for your body? What are your standards for life? You have to set your standards you have to meet your standards in order to become the leader, the man God wants you to be and your family needs you to be. You will succeed just like I have. If you have any questions, you know what to do. DM, comment, subscribe, like, all of that. I'm always here to help. And if you want to join me, the link will be at the bottom or you can join my Discord group where I give away all this information, programs, research, everything that I have to help you build the systems and engineer the life that you want for you and yours. This has been an unload session.